Thomas Dimitrov joins us here on the Doug Gottlieb Show. Of course, uh, he's got his own uh, podcast, which we want to discuss in a second. But I, I was quoting you, not verbatim, because I didn't know. <laughs> but the basic was you were surprised that Belichick didn't get a shot in this cycle. Is it simply because he couldn't do it his way and he didn't want to do it somebody else's way? No, I think I think anyone who brings in Bill knows that they're bringing in arguably the best coach ever and they're going to have to let him do what he needs to do. And, and people will, can make their comments about scouting. He's going to put the right personnel people around, right? I was interested to see how that would play out. Was it going to be Scott Pioli? Was it going to be John Robinson, former general managers? I do believe in that. Look, Arthur Blank, in my mind, he was looking at it. He, w he wanted it. There were people, I, I believe, in that organization who weren't necessarily interested in that, right? Because it's a complete turnover. Yes. That's, that's a big thing. You have, yes. People say change is really good. The transition is really hard. It's really hard. Really, really hard. Uh, Eric Eager alongside, of course, Eric and Thomas have their own uh, uh, podcast. Of course, um, Eric is with uh, some, uh, uh, Summer Spo Sumer. Sumer Sports. Yes. I, I did it last year, too. I apologize, Eric. Sumer Sports, sumersports.com. Um, okay, so does he does he coach again? I believe he does. I don't believe he goes into media and doesn't. He's a historian in my mind, meaning he wants that record. Yes, okay, it's not just that. He wants his dad coached until the very end. Right. I don't believe that he was going to go to Atlanta or anywhere else and leave after two years. Doug, I don't. I just have to Thomas, up you're, not, are, you're not prepared to actually go out on the limb and say he's going to coach this year the way I am. <laughs> go we, ahead. We, That's we a just great saw, So what way he's going to coach? We, we just saw Doc Rivers come off the TV set, right, and take over a Bucks team that was underachieving. We got some NFL teams, it, it's, Doug. It's really <laughs> – tell me, the, again, you're you're dealing with – you're comparing the NFL to the NBA. I am, but – Okay, but, and, and Thomas can speak to this because he's actually run an organization. I've only watched. The, the idea of Bill Belichick would go into – Basically, use somebody else's TV and somebody else's VCR and try and make it work. Like, it doesn't, it, the NFL doesn't work that way, does it? But prior to Bill Belichick, no one had won six Super Bowls before. No one had taken a, you know, 199th pick and made him into a, the best quarterback of all time. I, I do agree it's a long shot, but I mean, we. Tell me a place that makes sense Philadelphia. Okay, oh, so Dallas. Okay, okay, wait, wait. So, so again, let's let's talk real talk. You want real talk? Yeah. Okay. Who's gonna be offense coordinator, defense coordinator, in in Philadelphia? Bill Belichick. Call the no, place. no, no. Who's there right now? Who's they? They just hired one, did they not? Yeah. Yeah, they just hired one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Which is who? Just came from Miami. Miami. Yeah, yeah. Miami court. It's skipping my mind right now. Okay. Yeah. So Vic Fangio. Yep. Who yep. was a? He's he's been doing this for fifty years. He got two years to be a head coach in, in Denver. Okay. So. What you're saying is Bill Belichick, who is a defensive mastermind, whose son, who is his defensive coordinator, is now at the University of Washington. Many of his guys are coming to New England. So in midseason, he's going to come in, and he's going to be the head coach when somebody else runs the defense and somebody else runs the offense? Like, it doesn't – it just – Come on, data. He's the data guy. He's – you know, they're always okay, pushing Okay, so here's the data. Right. Tell yeah. me somewhere that's happened in the yeah. NFL ever. I mean, it doesn't – yeah, but he's been a guy, like, the last few years, though, in, in New England, he's let, you know, basically Gerard Mayo, his son, you know, they've been basically running and calling the plays. Yes, but they're clones of what he wants. You're talking about a guy, Vic Fangio, who's done it. He's like, Vic Fangio, he ain't doing it anybody else's way. I'm doing it my way. I've been doing it a long time my way. We just get an offense. We install a brand new offense with our, with our quarterback because last year's offense didn't work. Okay? You're not changing the verbiage midseason. Like, it's just too hard. Sure, but why is Belichick only getting, only looking at places like Atlanta, for example? Why wasn't, like, there were seven job openings. Why wasn't he casting a bigger net? He wants to go somewhere and catch Don Shula, right? He doesn't want to go somewhere, you know, where a place like Vegas, for example, that it's going to take a while to actually build that thing up. To me, that's the, that's the, the sort of trade off between wanting to go somewhere, wanting to get in his entire way. And wanting to catch Don Shula and win and actually win games and, and and win Super Bowls again. Well, again, this is kind of what we talked about, though. Like, you're not going to hire Bill Belichick and tell him to do it a different way. He's done it his way, and that's the way it works, right? In his mind, and he has, like you said, nine Super Bowl appearances, six Super Bowls. Is that fair? That's right. I mean, and you're not you're not throwing down any more money to to you know coerce him into into coming into that situation. We can respectfully disagree with yeah. that. I, I mean, it's an interesting Doc Rivers. I, I, listen, discussion. I I, I yeah. get it. Like my thing is like, okay, do you sit out there? Like, why didn't the Cowboys? I, if I was the Cowboys, I would have hired him. Now the problem with the Cowboys is Jerry wants to make calls. His son wants to make calls. They've done a very good job in scouting, and so you had to tell him like, hey. But it would have been his easiest path to Super Bowl. And the reason you hire him for the Cowboys is their flaws have been the playoffs. 
he's the greatest playoff coach there is. You know, why wouldn't you bring him in and, 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 it, and solve that? But, he's a, that yeah. but it doesn't fit. Is it that, though, in, like, the midseason? And, again, it is a long shot. That's why I'm throwing it out there as kind of a fun take here. But, like, isn't that the point where Belichick over the past few years has struggled from February to July, basically? And that is where the Cowboys, as much as people want to no, get Jerry I, Jones. No, I get it. No, I'm, I'm with you. It's the personnel stuff, right? Yeah. It's like the old, the old election the, thing, which I'm not sure if you're like, – how old are you? 38. <laughs> Yeah, so you might you might remember this, right? But it was it's the it was Bill it's the Bill economy Clinton. stupid. It's the economy stupid, yeah. right? Nice. It's it's the personnel stupid, right? He's he's. And Will, I actually think, and Thomas, you tell me if I'm wrong, the seven and nine COVID year might be the greatest coaching season in the history of the sport. He had a quarterback who could not throw a football, threw for less than a hundred yards three times, and they won. Right? That's unbelievable. He had eight opt outs, <laughs> loses true. Tom Brady. <laughs> He puts Cam Newton back there, who can't throw a football because his shoulder is shot, and they still won seven games. It was crazy in a good yeah, division. That's where he is amazing and situational mastermind. I Unbelievable. Don't think, yeah, I, but, I but don't you think though, Thomas, like being out of it for as as the number of months accumulate, yeah, his his the the degree to which he's going to want full control will dissipate month by month. That is my that is my, the gamble that I would make here. Okay. Or, does, or does he become more obstinate I, I, as I, those months go on? I, I got one more, and then we got to get a plug, and then we got we got to go. One second. Um, which is the better way to build a team? San Francisco 49ers got a quarterback that makes nothing. Their quarterback room is less than five million dollars. They put an all-star team around. Or the Kansas City Chiefs. They have, and granted, like these are dream scenarios, right? Yeah. The Kansas City Chiefs have the superstar quarterback making all the money couple key pieces and then fill it out with young players that are hungry especially on the defense you've built teams before what's the better way to build? i've been on both sides yep. and it's inevitable that you want to start the way that kansas city is and get to a spot where you feel comfortable looking the owner swallowing deep saying this guy's worth 250 million dollars you want to be in that spot so yes you would love to have the young guy Eric and I have argued about this as well. He wanted me to like cut Matt Ryan before it was, you know, it was too uh, before it was too late, and we got to that big thirty million dollar contract, or whatever it was. I just look. I mean, you eventually have to get to that spot where you have that stud quarterback, and you have to pay him. You have to adjust, and you have to be good at team building, of course, and understanding it. Sumer Sports, uh, you guys have you guys have your pod for 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 what somebody who hasn't listened to it, what are they going to get? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's former NFL GM who's been an executive of the year multiple times. It's a data scientist who's, you know, has an apprenticeship with, with said guy. We're just talking through, you know, the, the, uh, my, my wild-ass theories, the ones that, you're, you know, we just went over today. And, and Thomas basically steadies me and tells me no most of the time. And every once in a while he says, that's a good idea. Let's think about actually implementing it at, at the NFL scale. 24-10, you're the De Detroit Lions. Would you have kicked the field goal or gone for it? At 24-10, I still would have gone for it. I, I would have just called the Josh Reynolds catch the ball play. <laughs> what would you have done? I would have kicked. Yeah. I just would have kicked. I've seen crazy, crazy uh, endings. So we've, we've seen him in we've seen him in this game with the, with, with the Patriots yeah. and and with with others. Guys, it's great to catch up with you. Thank Thanks, you, so. thank Thanks, you so much. Appreciate